right, so here we go. Gonna go ahead and remove the exhaust. That way we can clear the way and really focus on our brake bleeder. All right, I'm gonna have to get an angle here. You guys can see barely. But I'm gonna take my extension and my 12 millimeter socket. And we're gonna go and get the exhaust removed. And we're gonna break our bleed, our, our, our brakes. Now, I'm not sure how these, this hose line is gonna to react to this, but I think we can still map some clearance here. Not too bad. The reach over, lefty loosey, or daddies. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can, there we go. I think this is righty tidy. I can't, can't tell now because I'm in the vertical. I think this is gonna be loosening it, yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right, I can spin this now. Sauce is gonna come out. And we might as well start putting our fan shroud the minute we put it back in, right? So everything's gonna come into play here. We have to take it out anyway, so we might as well. We'll break the bleeder, the brakes. And then we're gonna go ahead and install back our fan shroud. We're gonna try to get a lot done today that we've been putting off for a long, long time. We're gonna be very pleased. Okay. Dang, this thing is gonna be hard to get out now. Barely, barely can get it out. Okay, so we got that one side almost out. He's gonna probably fall. So let me break the other one loose. The other one's way out the other end. Same idea, just try to get him loose. Okay, we're gonna torque him back to about 120 inch pounds. Gives us about, about 40. Let me see if I can get in closer. Yeah, you guys can't see it now because the, the guy's here in the way. There you go. And we're going to test out our bonjo bolts and everything. Make sure those are good. I mean our bleeder bolt. This one's tight because I think it's resting now on the exhaust is resting on it. All right, click, click, click noise. I think it's okay now. I think I probably turn it by hand. Nope, it's still pretty darn strong. Can't turn it by hand. Okay, so let me go ahead. Whoa. It's also almost ready to fall out on me. Okay, let's see here. I have to scrape. Put a little, little paper cushion there. I think I could barely twist it by hand, but it's still not hot enough here. Sorry. Okay, going back in for him. There we go. Come off yet? There it goes. Should be loose now. He landed right on the cable. This guy should be loose too. Put these nuts, prepare them. Let's see how bad our exhaust gasket is. After all that, check it out. Here we go. Lift this out. Look at that. That's our exhaust gasket. You guys see a little bit? It's gonna fall. It's not bad actually. Uh, this is we didn't have any copper spray. Look at that. It's still usable. What do you guys think? Not too shabby. You don't see the, the pattern anymore, but no, this is way dark. <laughs> Look at that one right there. I'm gonna take a vacuum real quick and suck on it uh, with the vacuum. I think we go straight directly to it, maybe. I don't think these studs might get in the way, we'll see. I'll turn the vacuum on it right now. Let's, uh, 
Let me get the vacuum real quick. Get a good vacuum down. I'm gonna put this exhaust in a safe box so I don't scrape the carbon fiber. Okay, here we go. Turning on the vacuum. goes in perfectly. Very strong. I hope you guys can see it. Alright, so that shot back is very strong. Okay, so see if I capture the whole thing. Yeah, you guys can see it. Yep, so we're able to suck it out. You can see how black that is. So if I take my first of all, let me clean this real quick here. See this right here? That's just from the buildup. That's the carb right there. That's See that? Now it's nice shiny again. Uh, you don't want to soak this in gasoline because it's still fiber. So just kind of give it a good clean right here. Just like as much as you can just with your regular shop rag. It has a little bit of stainless steel inside. But it's mainly fiber. There we go. See that? We got it from that charcoal color to more now of a suitable... Wow, car builds up pretty fast. Okay, that one's done. All right, so here I'm gonna try to clean this guy up a little bit. You can see the minute I put my, shouldn't be sticking my hand in there to be honest with you. <laughs> but I'm keeping a low profile from the, exhaust, especially with the battery still hooked onto it. Because you don't want your valves to be rocking while your finger's in there, so be careful. Uh, I'm not sticking my finger in there anymore, but didn't think about that until now. Okay, then what you want to do is you want to just twist it. And just get your clean shop rag in there. Twist it as much as you can. You can see in a second here how nasty this thing is. Ugh. I almost feel like spraying some, uh, what do you call that? Brake cleaner in there? I mean, not brake cleaner, but yeah, parts cleaner. Let do his magic or something in there, but yeah, you'll see how dark that is. That's where your um, thing is coming out from. I don't think it'll hurt it, huh? Put some spray, some brake cleaner real quick in there. Yeah, I don't think it'll. I don't think it'll do anything. Spray the brake cleaner, and just let it drip out before we install our. Uh, what's in there really? It's just gonna be our valves, right? Behind the scenes, our valves. I think brake cleaner will dry up pretty quick. Parts cleaner. Yeah, let's just spray some part cleaner in there. Uh, but the only thing about it is I don't have any. <laughs> I think we're all out of parts cleaner. Is there a little green bottle? I think we are. Let me check. Um, uh, I see motor treatment, lubricant. On. Body intake cleaner. You know what we can do? We can car fills up. We can here put some of this guy in there. Air intake cleaner. It's almost the same stuff. Uh, brake cleaner. So I'm gonna shoot upward. There we go. 
There we go. And it dries up pretty fast. Just let it do its thing. Now you definitely probably don't want to put WD-40. That might create much more lubricant that you don't really want from this side. So yeah, so we're gonna do the same thing on the intake side. We're gonna spray some of this throttle and air cleaner because eventually those things are all jointed anyway. So this might help a little bit. I don't see any kind of burnt exposure other than, you know, uh, so I'm gonna wipe this area clean. I don't see any gasket you know, mark, so that's a good sign. This is just dirt. So if gasket leak, you can usually tell but there's a little burn smoke from the sides of these things, and I don't see any, so it's a good thing. That way we can rest assured when we seal it. Now I'm still putting the towel in here and just kind of give it a good twist. We got a little bit of car build up back out of there. A little more than I wanted, but okay, let's go and hit with the vacuum again and then call it, it for that one. Suck out whatever needs to be sucked out. <laughs> Okay, let's get started on, I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit and we'll get started setting up for the brake fluid um, thing because I just don't like to work in an area where it's too clear. I have too many things going on here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of get this all cleaned up, prepare what we need to take care of a little later, the decompression tube. But in the meantime, we can let our oil set before we put our decompression tube. We can go ahead and start bleeding our brakes. Uh, the front included so that will probably have to be bleed out we'll open these guys up put our ncy master cylinder cap which is going to look awesome and i can't wait so i'll catch you guys uh shortly so let me go ahead and put this on pause and see how much i can clean up before we i can prep this for the next one all right let's go and grab start it um we're going to need an empty water bottle and we're going to need our pit posse brake tool one way valve hopefully it blows away you can make sure just kind of blow on it See, it goes supposed to go this way. Make sure it's still active. I mean, it's not clogged because sometimes it actually gets clogged in. So you can spray some car cleaner or just kind of blow on it. So I'm going to just blow on it. A little tight in there, but I think it'll work. Okay, so it says have directional. Okay, so we're going to get ready. We're going to slice it up. We're going to need a razor blade to slice it. Leave our razor blades in here. And then we're gonna need an Allen socket to remove. Okay, let's go and slice this bottle up real quick. Put a little slit on there, there we go. That way this guy gets in there and gets the hook on it. Keep our brake fluid in one container area. There we go. There we go, keep the cap closed. All right, so now we need the Allen socket. And let's see which one. So far we know that we need number six. And number eight so far that we use out of our stash here to tighten things down. But let's see if it even has a smaller one for us to be able to remove our brake cap here, which we're going to replace out with our NCY one again. So let's check this out. Hmm. Let's see if this number H2.5 will work. Because I know we use H6 and we use H H8. So let's see if this hex, I guess H stands for hex. Let's see if this one will actually fit. There we go. I'm always lucky. Yep, it's a good fit. So we'll use this one to drive it out. You can almost drive it out by hand, really. Look, drive it out right now by hand. So what we're gonna do? Let's go and break that front bleeder first. In fact, you know what? I'll do it a little harder. I'll break the rear one because that's harder for me. Because this one actually still has a little bit left. So worst come to worst, we'll at least have. You can see how much slack here because we changed a new one. This one goes all the way down compared to this one. See, it stops right there. So if I was to squeeze this guy right here, 
since he's so new. And I, I'm very confident that our JB weld here doesn't leak. We'll find out if it does leak because you'll start seeing a dribble right here already by now. So let's go and break him off. We'll get, we'll get this semi, semi tighten. Or, all right, this is really tight. So let's see if I can loosen this. Just, there we go, I can loosen it up. It's pretty loosened already. It looks like it's just waiting for us. There we go. Right, what I can't pre-loosen, I just put a sock and drive it real quick. Okay, so let's go and get that so everything ready. We'll open a brand new uh, dot three brake fluid. Now you can check your user manual. Don't just go by this one because this says it can either use dot three or dot four. Check your user manual for your scooter to determine which uh, heat tolerance it recommends. I just went with dot three synthetic fluid by Lucas brand. You can pick those up at the auto parts store. And let's get a small socket driver to remove this. I'll need an extension. Get it over the crossbar a little bit. Like having a little trouble with these this guy here. There we go. Get over my uh what do you call that? Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Just gotta get them over. Get them over my ram mount here. It's good ram. It's good ram mount. It's just unfortunate they crack sometimes. Well, I had it for a year. I didn't actually maintain. I put it outside with the frame and everything. So this bike's been sitting out in open weather for the rain. But it held up pretty good. You can see little crack marks right here. But it still holds up pretty good. Okay. And prepare these are our nice Allen here. We we can budget open. There's three levels. The first one is just the aluminum cap, which we're gonna be not using anymore. We're gonna be replacing this with the NCY one. So we're gonna put this down here for now. And this is our NCY one. That will probably be replaced. Oh, not that one. I think it might be in the bag. Somewhat. These are our rollers. All right, as I say it, I would like to grab it, but I'm not finding it. Huh. Well, oh, there it goes. It's all the way digging deep here. It fell off. There we go. Our NCY Master Cylinder Cap, brand new. There they are, nice and black and yellow one. So we'll throw that in there in the mix. As soon as we get this brake bleeded, now there's going to be another cap that's going to come off. And before you start ripping out the cap, this is where all the brake fluid is going to drip out. So brake fluid is really harsh on your plastic, especially if you have it nicely coated. Luckily, I have most of the front dash is all removed, but if it gets on this right here, you can see some of the brake fluid stain. It does eat a little bit of your plastic. See that little watermark? That's the thing that's from brake fluid. So it's really harsh. So you want to do is get a clean cloth, like a little thing. We're going to make a bib for it, just like I did last time. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Just kind of rip it. Tear it up a little bit in the area. Just a little bit. Cause then you're gonna need to cover it. That's all you're gonna do. Sorry, you got that little rip area there. You're gonna cover it. Hopefully you can tuck it in. You might need a little flat screwdriver or something. To play tuck in here. So let's see if I can find something. Mm -hmm. There we go, we'll use the bottom of this guy. Doesn't look too sharp. And I'm gonna try to hold this with my arm here while I'm doing this. Two hands. What you wanna do is, once you get that all apron up or bib up, There we go, there we go. And that's what you really want. And then, there you go, see how that? Kind of bib up there. Okay, then you can remove the little plastic one. Save this for here. Um, we're just gonna use the plastic one. We're gonna, there's another rubber boot here that comes off the plastic one as well. But we're not gonna use the rubber boot. But what we are gonna use is just the plastic one. Okay, so we're gonna take this plastic one out. Leave them, I guess, in here. We need the plastic one, we just don't need the rubber boot. So let me go ahead and remove 
the rubber boot off. The rubber boot doesn't shouldn't show like that. There you go. That's how it should look like. Okay. So I'll keep my hands clean here. Okay, so we'll need this guy because we'll need to probably cover him up after we keep tapping it with brake fluid and pumping it. So we're going to do a lot of siphoning and pumping, okay? So just leave him hanging loose here. The trick is to actually turn the handlebar since you're working by yourself like me. You want to turn it in this way. Even though it's going to incline a little bit, just mind the brake fluid, okay? You don't want to tap it to the point where the brake fluid starts spilling out. Now, the reason why you put here because it might create some geyser and squirts out. And I noticed that. So you could do it slowly and it'll still probably squirt out. So here it goes. That's our old brake fluid. Well, not that old. We haven't really siphoned it yet. But the idea is to never get these two holes to expose. So when you actually push your, your brake here, you can see those things actually come. See that? Air bubbles coming out. And siphon into our, I believe, our, our, our hose line. And it's supposed to build pre Oh, see that? The guys are just squirt right now. There you go. And I got a little bit on my, my uh, plastic uh, ram mount. So let me go and get some another clean thing here to back it up. Ooh. That's not what we want. That's not what we want to, for it to land. We'll leave this whatever there. Wherever it goes, we think we can protect it. Okay, that's why we want to put it there because it creates geyser. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this now, this new setup here. Okay, so we're gonna need a nine millimeter, I believe, or eight millimeter. So, or some people use a five sixteenth. But we're gonna take this open, and then we're gonna feed this guy in here. Now, if this is not tight enough, what we could do is just go ahead and get some uh, tie strap ready. Preferably the, you know, the small one. That way it holds in place for the air not to squeeze out. So I think I have a small tie strap. I think, yep. That to help so much. I mean, that's the only thing that's actually holding our um, fuel line inlet from not leaking fuel. So here's the small one. You want to use a small tie strap because these actually work way better than the regular one. Not because it's stronger, but it has little smaller teeth that can actually get into a little more. These little teeth here compared to the big ones. So the big ones are great for other projects, but not tying your fuel line or your vacuum line. The small ones are much better. And we're going to go ahead and get our eight millimeter socket here. We're going to get an open ranch one, uh, meaning let's see here. You want one that's actually exposed. I'm not sure is an eight millimeter. I think it is eight millimeter. I think the nine millimeter is definitely not it. So let me go ahead and find that socket we had before. Nine millimeter. Somewhere in here. Ten millimeter. So you want to get a socket that fits it perfect because you do not want to strip your brake bleeder. So there we go, Nine, 5 16th or 8 millimeter. So I'm going to use the 5 16th one. Okay, but I'm going to tie strap it more securely, that hose line from experience, and we'll cut it off after we're done using it. I'm going to use this to help me, I guess, a little overkill there. I just need a little needle nose pliers to pull a little bit tighter. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tie strap it we're just tie strapping the hose line here for for it to not come back off and you can use a clamp or however you want to do it I just think a tie strap just does a pretty good trick uh, you want to try to get on to the hose not not anywhere else so and try because it looks like it's borderline if you put over it you put over, it's gonna slide right off and defeat that purpose, so. And you wanna make sure it's a great seal. It's actually, you just want it to, not too much air issue, but you just don't want it to have to spill the brake because the brake is gonna get slippery and loop. Okay. All right. All right, so we'll just cut this off so it won't interfere with our ratchet. There we go. It's not gonna be a permanent thing. Uh, and then what you wanna do is have this ready. Lefty Lucy. So the minute we open it up, 
we're going to want to uh, be able to close it back up when we actually release our brake lever. And that's really simple as it is. Now we're going to open our brand new Lucas here. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to tap it right now. See if I can get this mounted. You guys can watch me from, I guess, a different angle here and there. <laughs> Trying to. There we go. All right, so we're going to open this up here. I'm going to get prepared to. It's brand new. The seal is still on there. Very confident. I'm going upside down. Okay, so what we're going to do is flow it. Dig it in a little bit. Open up, nice clean brake fluid. Almost look like, I guess liquid. I mean clear. All is liquid. Okay, I'm gonna pour it. You notice I got angle anyway, anyway this way. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this guy. Now what I'm gonna do is actually start building pressure now even before I open the brake fluid. The reason why is I actually wanna start pumping the air out from the cap a little bit, but I know the cap is going to create a little geyser. And there we go. You can see there right there. I'm going to put this somewhere where I don't accidentally kick it over. So you might want to maybe set up on a table or a chair, whichever is convenient for you. I'll put it here. I'm pretty confident. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Better not. But we'll see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump it slowly. I'm going to put the geyser, uh, ooh, look at that. It went for a dip on me. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Let me see if I can wipe it a little bit off. Most thing I want to do is build more trouble for myself. Okay, so let me get another clean shop rag here. Go through these quite a bit. Okay, I'm glad we're able to do this because these are just all the fluid changes, brake fluid. Uh, we got our transmission fluid, so it goes with the territory. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to put him over this right here, right? He's not going to go over. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pump it, even though this is not broken yet, meaning there's no ventilation coming in. Now, since you have this open, it doesn't mean that actually it's exposed right now because the bonder bolt is still sealed. You have to actually uh, counterclockwise this to actually get the bonder bolt to actually release fluid out from here. So even though there's not open yet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon it until I feel this a little bit more tension. It might not be until I actually crack it open. So what I'm doing is cranking it. So you don't have to worry about the geyser. It's just spurting itself. I can do it as hard as I want. The geyser is not gonna, it's not gonna have that much force to squirt out the plastic. See there? But you don't wanna do it where the point where it actually eats it all up. Oh, you can see here, look. Little hole right here that indicates, look at the geysers. See, it looks like it's trying. Luckily, that little plastic is actually blocking it a little bit. I'm not sure you can see that. It's kind of funny. If I can get the resolution on here. See that little hole there? See that? The geyser's trying to come out. It can't come out because it has to shoot straight into that hole. It's being blocked a little. Thank goodness for that. Okay, now let's go and lift it up and see how far. Because we don't want it to the point where those two holes are exposed on the surface. Because they are exposed. As I can see, it's actually going down a little bit more. So we still have ways to go. So we'll keep on siphoning up. And what's actually causing is the pump here. Sorry, I had to get, put this guy in here because, yeah, let me, I can remove him now. See what it is, is this little pump actuates right here. And it actually, you can see the two, see how it pumps? It's pumping for us. See, just by doing this alone, it's actually getting a little tighter, not a lot, see? It shouldn't actually fall flat into the handlebar like this. You'll see it start getting tighter. And once it gets tighter, see, our brake that we just installed, reinstalled back. See, it's, it's the, the piston's not even protruding out right now because it's, it's not building enough pressure for the liquid to actually pump these pistons. Remember the two uh, brake pistons here that we squished in? These things would show a little bit more and you'll see that the brake pads will start gripping the disc and 
you'll see it start bending it. Uh, you know, you'll see this actually moves because it's already gripping the, the disc brakes. But right now, it's not even building enough pressure for it to do that. So I can't really... Let me see if I can get it this way. There you go. See? They're still off, right? See the brake pads? They're still off the disc. It's not really even touching the disc on the one side. This is actually where the, the pistons will actually come and push in like that. So you can see the disc brakes has almost a good centimeter of clearance. Maybe two centimeter if I'm not looking at it right. But yeah, it's not even touching it. So that means we got quite a bit to go pumping it. So the air pressure is not being forced uh, from this bleeder bolt. It's actually being forced to come out of here. That's why it's actually creating it. So if you're reinstalling a new hose or changing hose or connection, you might want to actually siphon first, you know, the air out of the hose first. So there's quite a bit of air in this hose already as it is. There's no need to break it and bleed it until we can actually siphon quite a bit. So we'll keep doing this. Probably be doing this for another 10 minutes, really. And then I'll show you how to angle your, sort of your body position. This is pretty much what you'll do. You'll reach for your left hand, or your, I guess your left hand, right? You're, you're like me on this side. You'll reach for your left hand, and then what you want to do is extend your right hand here, and go like that. And then you can tighten it with this, this left hand here. Tighten, open, tighten, open. As soon as you uh, hold down the brake lever, you hold it down with your right hand. You want to go ahead and open this, get the fluid coming out. And then you're going to keep doing that. I'm just going to do this for a little bit more longer. And I'm going to try out do the other way to see if actually can speed up the process. But as far as I know, I think this is what I had to do previously to find out. I spent pretty much a good half an hour trying to open the brake bleeder when I was installing a new brake line and I realized that the brake line was just so much full of air it would take me forever to try to you know sort of break it with if it was something like existing brake line let's see where it's at now we did quite a few pumps already right mm, it's still in the same level really so it doesn't seem like we have too much to worry about okay let's go ahead and let's go and try that method I was telling you about let's see there it goes let me get that towel here just clean it like a little baby all right so let's go and do that all right so here we go what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you I'm gonna open with one hand well I'm gonna pump five pumps and then I'm gonna open with the other hand okay so let's see if I can actually crisscross and aim this okay so here we go Okay, you're gonna watch. I'm gonna turn one way and then I'm gonna try to twist the camera in the other way. That way you get a really idea of what I'm doing. Okay, so where I'm really reaching over. Well, let me get my socket ready and everything. I'm gonna put a little piece of paper between the socket and the bolt to give it a little bit more uh, stiffness and tension. So, okay, you wanna keep tapping it until, like right now, I just tapped it right now. So we wanna make sure this one stays full. So you could do about maybe five more pumps uh, siphon them maybe about maybe five more pumps of four sets. So what you want to do again is reach over and you can see here it's still it's coming out but you haven't seen the bubble yet it's resuscitating back. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and show you guys again. I'm gonna pump it five times and then I'm gonna swing the camera hopefully this thing lets me. Okay one two three four Five. You can see here it's actually getting tighter now. The brake caliper, here I'll even let go of this right now, but I'll have to come back and hold it, okay? So I'll show you right now. Remember the brake caliper again, it wasn't protruding out. You can see here, now it is protruding out. I think we did it this way before, so you guys can actually see it. See, there it go. See the brake caliper? See, it's forcing now to hug. See, right now, see it's gripping on the disc now. Before it wasn't, you remember there? We had about a centimeter. So even if I push this, you, I want you to focus this while I grip the brake lever here. You can see how it's bending this. Wait, let's see. See that? It's flexing now. Well, I can't see it because it's really tight and stuff. So there's a brake caliper. See, it's actually coming out now because we bleed it to the point now. And this also has tension too. It's not going all the way like it normally did. Do you remember? It used to come all the way out here. So here we go. I got quite a bit of pumps in there. But I'm not going to open it yet until I actually pump it. So I'm going to go ahead and pump it. 
and then I'm gonna open this and you're gonna see some more coming out. You, can, you wanna keep on doing this until you don't see any more air bubbles. In fact, I, I wanna get closer for you so you can actually focus on the air bubbles. There we go. And the front one should be the same process. It's gonna be a little easier because it's more closer to you. But same way, just reach over from the other side and you'll be able to do this on your own. Okay. Here we go, I'm gonna crack it open. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna hold the brake lever down. And when I do release this, it's gonna actually let me slam the brake lever even more. There it goes, see that? Mm. Tighten it back. I'm tightening it back clockwise. One, two, three, four, five. There it goes, see that? You wanna get all those air bubbles out. One, two, three, four, five. This will be our fifth set, I mean our fourth set here. One, two, three, four, five. There it go, lock it down. See, no more air bubbles here, it's good. Then I'm gonna tighten all the way. There you go, it dropped just in time. <laughs> so there we go. Now what we're gonna do is gonna tap it off and we're gonna keep it off. But before I tap it off, I'll show you to kind of level it out over. Make sure nothing spilled. Looks like a few wet marks came out from the very top. That should be fine. Okay. There we go. Quite a bit of pressure. Now that it's locked, you can see here, squeezing it. So it's not letting me go all the way down. And it's got, it keeps building it, see? I'm gonna show you how to get even more out there. Okay, you can see here, it's, even with the cap on, it managed to squirt through that little hole there. So what I'm gonna do is clean it up. And this one's ready. You can see how much there is left there. You wanna go ahead and fill it up. Don't overfill it because this thing here needs to flush back in it, right? So this one takes about a centimeter. So you don't wanna overfill it. So this is it, this is the final fill for our, our rear brake lever. Let's see if I can get this squeezed open. Keep my phone charger so I can record a little bit longer for you, as much as I can before actually the storage is filled and we'll call it a day. Sun's about to go down. It's kind of nice, but it's about to go down. Okay. All right. I probably used up this system already when we siphon it. So it used a quarter of it already. So it doesn't use that much, but you're not going to be able to use this next year. Just kind of discard it because moisture usually gets into it. And with everything else, moisture is always a problem. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and move this over. Okay, then I'm gonna go and tap it off. Uh, you can see I leveled the handlebars here. Oh, Ooh, see? And if you do actually overflow it, see right now it's up to the rim. There's no way I can close the lid without causing more spill. What you do is just go and get yourself a syringe. It's a good time to actually suck off any bottom feeders there that you wanna get rid of. So make sure your syringe is clean. I see a piece of hair here. So wipe down your syringe surface. Keep that guy clean. Don't worry about the suction. But inside of it anyway. So what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and suck some out. So if you have overflow, that's fine. You can use it to clean out some of that little particle there. I'm gonna try. I think that might be a permanent stain in there, but we'll see. So what you do is take your syringe Suck it a little bit. So then I'm sucking it, getting some out already. Then you can go a little bit further down. See that? Still not enough here, we wanna go further down. So I'm taking out quite a bit out. There we go, this might be enough here. You can see here I'm leaving a centimeter just so I can close the cap and won't be, uh, so that all this right here is taken out. Now there's no need to put this back in your, your reserve brake lever here. Just go ahead and dump it back in here. You can see this little catch can here works beautifully. Uh, this was from another spill, but you can go and just take off the cap and just kind of squirt it in there. All right, so we won't think that hopefully that same mistake. We'll leave the catch can back to where it is. And then we can go ahead and take this off and do the front one just the same way. But you're gonna see me go ahead and close it. 
So we got that in there now. What you want to do is you want to wipe your rubber part <laughs> clean. So this is going from behind it. The wet part here, that's fine. Uh, it can stay wet as long as it's not dirty. But you want to wipe this top surface clean. Because this is the one that's actually going to go on top of your plastic. Your plastic one also needs to be clean here as well for both sides. Because moisture usually builds up and we don't want any more moisture than it already has on the brake lever. So here we go. Gonna do a cleaning job here on this one. Kind of dab out. Careful, these are really soft. Uh, you don't want to put too much pressure on them. Um, you can get like a little clean shop rag like this. Make sure it's clean. You know, if you have to use the inside of it, great. So let's go and get that smashed in clean. And you can just dabble like this. Careful, don't twist, don't don't sponge it or anything like that. These things are really fragile. You want to keep them nice. You just want to get dry. Again, you could keep the bottom one wet, but for the meantime, let's go ahead and dry up the socket here. All right, let me let me find that open socket here as well, do so you guys can see it. Yeah, you could definitely do this. I mean, before I had to have my dad help me, but now this is cool. You know, he's actually left to raid. My mom and dad went to Cambodia. I uh, wish them a safe trip and a fun journey, and they will be back. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and counterclockwise to open. So I'm going to get ready to tighten it back going clockwise upward, and then crack it open to release it to get the brake fluid out. I'm going to go counterclockwise. So here we go. Try and get this guy squeeze in here. Because you want to be able to squeeze it in there. Might be too thick of a, a setup here. Maybe I'll rip in another half. I'm folding it again, so it might not make any difference now again. But yeah, too thick. All right, here we go. The reason I put a cloth here, normally, there you go. That way it can hold it. So what you want to do is, is the minute you close your brake lever by squeezing it, you want to go and open this up so actually brake fluid will start pouring out from here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys can watch me. I'm going to pump. I'm going to hold on to the brake lever. As soon as I hold on to the brake lever, I'm going to twist the camera around while holding down the brake lever still. So I'm going to do it little by little. That way you guys can catch it, okay? Okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, the geyser is closed. The plastic, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm holding it down, see? And I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around the other way. Maybe I can do it this way. That's not bad. Okay, you can see here my arm reaches over and I'm gonna push down on this. Well, actually, I'm so sorry. This is righty tidy. I need to go from here. Let me get into angle where I have to lift up. Counterclockwise is up. There we go. Nothing, right? Which is expected. So pump again, one, down, two, three, four, five. Now the reason why is I'm holding it down. As I'm holding down the brake lever, I open this up. There you go, see that? I close it back and then when I close it back in the down position, you can see the little fluid's coming out. When I close it back in the down position, that's when I actually close the other end and I can go ahead and continue pumping. One, two, three, four, five. Coming back to here. It's not bad actually to hold it. Lift up. There you go, look at that, brake fluid's coming out. Be careful with these bonjour balls, they are soft and I will be the first to testify. You wanna, what you wanna do is get all that little air bubbles out. I'm hoping you guys can see it, I just don't wanna move the, the tripod there yet, but I will do it for you guys. Okay, here we go, I'm gonna, is it closed? Yeah, I think it's closed. Righty tidy, okay good. It's closed, now I'm gonna pump again. One, two, three, four, five. Open it up counterclockwise. See all that air bubble. Now I'm gonna go ahead. You can you can rest your brake lever here. As soon as you close it back, though. See, I'm gonna I close it back so I can rest it down. I can open it like that. And here's the air bubble I was telling you about. See that right there? It's almost making its way down. See those air bubbles? You want to do it until all those air bubbles is gonna become a little sprite sprinkles in a second, but you still want to get as much as you can out of there. And then another trick is to tie strap your brake lever for the night. 
um, you know, after you move your scooter in position, because if you tighten your brake lever with a tie strap, it's gonna lock it in, right? <laughs> so you don't wanna do that. Let me go and get, um, let me go ahead and get the charger on here. So it's <laughs> out of battery and we're out of time. So here we go, that's pretty much it. I'll keep on siphoning this in and you'll start seeing it. So it's not bad. Oh, by the way, keep an eye out on your reserve as well. Because even though it comes out quite a bit here, your reserves will start emptying out pretty quickly. You might want to check your reserve after three successful siphon. Because you do not want to get this to a lo low level. See right now? Let's go and tap it right now while we're up here. There's no reason for it not to be. Like I kept these guys here. Actually, I should get them away from the Gibby. What am I doing? It'll, brake flow will ruin anything it touches, really. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tap them. Just fill them up. You know, I do, oh, seriously, that thing just took a dive.